Transactions series, and here we'll be discussing the using of accounting terms. So the first term is an account. An account is a detailed record of the changes in a particular asset, liability, revenue, expense, etc. That's called an account. The ledger is a book that contains details of all these accounts. The journal is a chronological record of the transactions of the business. And we typically will journalize transactions first, and then we post transactions to the ledger. And the trial balance is a list of all the accounts with their balances from the ledger. And in the trial balance, we want to ensure that all of our debit balances equal our credit balances. So now let's talk about double entry accounting just for a second. Double entry accounting means there's always a giving and a receiving side. And because of this giving and receiving side, there's always at least two accounts that are affected by a transaction. So let's look at some examples of double entry accounting in this giving and receiving side of transactions. So if we buy land for cash, we're actually giving cash and we're receiving land. If we sell inventory on account, and of course that means that they're going to pay us for this sale later, then we are giving inventory and we're receiving an account receivable. If we purchase equipment for cash, we are giving cash and receiving equipment. Now let's take a look at the T account. So again, this is the account we were talking about before that are all housed in the ledger. So this is what a T account looks like. You can see at the top of this account we put our account name, whether it be cash, or land, or inventory, or accounts payable, notes payable, common stock, retained earnings, any type of account, this is what it would look like. All T accounts have a left and a right side. No matter what type of account we're looking at, whether it's an asset or liability or owner's equity account, it doesn't matter. The left side is always the debit. And the right side is always the credit. Let's say, for example, again, it doesn't matter what account we're looking at, whether it's an asset like cash or a liability like notes payable. This is what it would look like. Let's say, for example, we had a debit balance of $1,000 and our total credits equal $2,000. Therefore, the balance in this account, because our credits are more than our debits, would be a credit balance of $1,000. Because, again, our credits are $1,000 more than our debits. Well, let's flip this. What if our debits totaled $2,000 for whatever account this would be, and our credits totaled $1,000? Can you think of what our balance would be? Our balance would be a debit balance of $1,000 because our debits